Welcome. Uh, this tutorial is going to be on the timer triggered uh, DAC output. So we want to produce an output on the DAC channel uh, at a specific timing interval. So for this we'll use uh, three basic modules, uh, a, a DAC, of course, uh, a timer, and a, an array that consists value that uh, certain values that we want to send out on the DAC. So the idea is the timer six will set it up so that it will be triggered uh, or interrupt, it'll generate an interrupt every one eight thousandth of a second. So in other words, eight kilohertz. Uh, so it'll trigger the DAC. Uh, the DAC will grab memory uh, values from memory and send it out on the output pin. So this is the overall general setup that we want to do. In order to do that, we'll use the STM32 QBMX. So here's my QBMX. Uh, I've created a new project uh, and put its settings so that the output uh, uh, is generated with only necessary library files and a separate C and header file is created for every peripheral. On the project, I've set it to the right X, uh, right locations and so forth. Set the uh, clock frequency to be 216 megahertz. That's a maximum on my Nucleo uh, 144 uh, board. We're doing this from the for the STM32 F746 chip. So uh, I let me do the first thing is set up the sys uh, to be serial wire so that we can do the debugging. Uh, next thing we'll activate a timer six. So I have activate timer six. And then finally, we need to enable the DAC, which is uh, going to be right here. So I DAC output one enable. Now I've enabled the output of the DAC and I see that it is located on, uh, if I zoom in a little bit more, I see it's located on PA4. So let me bring up the Nucleo manual. Here's my uh, STM32 uh, F7 Nucleo manual. So that's the Nucleo manual right here. and I want to look for pin PA4, or you can look for PA4 on these pictures here or in the back as well. So uh, PA4, I'm going to search for that pin, and I see that the in the F746, that's the board I'm using. Uh, the PA4, the PA4 is on CN7 connector. Uh, pin D24 or pin 17 of that connector. So I actually have an output. Uh, a wire connected to that and I'll be looking at that in the oscilloscope in just a second. So once uh, that is all clear, so we have that. Uh, our clock is configured at 216, so let's go configure our DAC and the timer 6. So first timer 6. Timer 6, I want to do a total of 8 kilohertz. And a quick recap from uh, last time, uh, a prior video. Uh, if I want to generate uh, Timer 6 uh, to be uh, 8 kilohertz interrupt. Uh, we saw that the timer 6 was on APB1 bus. The APB1 bus frequency is 108 megahertz. And based on that, and this simple timing diagram, we can calculate the overall frequency of an 8 hertz sampling rate to be as follows. So 8 hertz sampling rate, if we don't use the prescaler, okay, uh, will be basically whatever this clock frequency will be the same as the APB1 bus frequency, so 108 megahertz. So we'll put a prescaler of zero. So that'll be the same as the 108 megahertz. So the counter that's uh, running timer six is being driven by a 108 megahertz clock. So 108 megahertz clock divided by eight kilohertz is going to give us the value that we need to store on timer ARR. And we saw that that value for eight kilohertz was 13,499. So knowing this, now let's go configure our QBMX. So timer six, we'll ask it to count up to 13,499. Uh, when it gets to that point, I want it to generate an update event and, and uh, generate a global interrupt. So we've set counting up to 13,499 with an update event trigger uh, and the NBIC is enabled. So apply, say, apply, say, okay. On the DAC side of things, now we've enabled the output buffer. Uh, let's uh, trigger with a output event on timer six as well. Apply, say, okay. Uh, and that should be uh, all the set of necessary, so let's generate our code. While it's generating code, uh, 
All right, the code has been generated and Kyle Microvision is now trying to open. I click on open project. Uh, it is taking a little while to bring my Kyle Microvision up. Okay, uh, Kyle Microvision is finally, finally up now here. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. So let's create a memory array. Uh, what we'll call it is T, let's call it values. And in fact, let's just randomly give it some values here. So let's say 3710. That's about maximum of uh, where we would be. Uh, 3768, let's say. Uh, so I'm basically trying to create a square wave looking signal. Uh, with uh, maybe some noise in it, right? So uh, eight data points, four on the high side, four on the low side uh, for my uh, values. Let me save that. You and we'll have to uh, iterate over these values. So let's create an index i equals zero. Uh, what we want to do is we want to, in our main, after the everything has been initialized, uh, what we need to do is we need to basically use health, oops, health time uh, base start underscore IT, and we are going to use timer six. So, so far we've initialized a timer uh, and we've set the timer to go ahead and start counting and when the interrupt is generated uh, according to uh, our interrupt handler routine which is timer six right here that will call the timer six interrupt handler and as the update event happens it will take me to this point right here which is a weak function and that's what we will replicate as a strong one here in main. So in main function, uh, what we'll do is we'll basically inside what happens, uh, we'll start the DAC. Once I get to an if that event, I'll start the DAC. Uh, has DAC and then the, uh, so, oops. Let me see, what, what are the parameters needed for DAC? Comma. Uh, DAC, we need to specify what channel. Uh, so we have DAC channel one, DAC channel one, uh, that's what we want. All right. Uh, and then we have HAL underscore DAC set value, which takes in the configuration edge DAC, uh, DAC channel one. Uh, next is alignment, so we'll align it as 12 bit uh, right alignment underscore ALIZN. So and what we will write to it is values. I. So we'll read from this array and write to it. Uh, what we'll do is I plus plus. Well, we declared only a total of eight variables. So if I is ever greater than or equal to seven, what we want to do is we want to reset the value of i equals zero so that we can create a periodic square wave and that should be it and let's compile this uh, and we'll uh, run it in the meantime as it's compiling i'm going to wire up uh, my uh, cn7 pin 17 that was port a pin 4 that's where the dac output is uh, to my oscilloscope and waveform generator and i'm going to bring up my waveform generator and get started. All right, so as it's compiling, all right, so it's uh, done building and compiling the code and I have uh, basically set up my waveform generator, uh, not the waveform generator, but the uh, wire from PA4 to uh, 
uh, scope channel one setup currently. Now I'm going to hit the debugger. And if things work out, we should be seeing a square wave come out on the oscilloscope. All right, so I'm going to hit run. And what I'm going to do is bring up my oscope here and enable the oscope as well. And we'll see what happens. There you go. So here it is, a square wave that's being created uh, and generated from the DAC. Uh, so we have this value coming out right now. On main, uh, if you, this is, these are the values that are showing up currently. Uh, four high points, four low points, is a sample at 8 kilohertz, uh, and so forth. So let me stop this right now, and what we'll do is we'll look at one more value, make sure we're getting, uh, we're able to generate other waveforms as well. So next we'll do, uh, I'll update these values with some uh, values uh, for a sine wave. So let's go generate a sine wave second. So if, let me stop the uh, oscilloscope, and I will uh, go and get values for a sine all right, so uh, we're at this point right now. Uh, let me go get some uh, sine waves uh, value from a website. I went to a website and copied and pasted uh, sine lookup generator that I created uh, for a 12-bit uh, and 8-point uh, sine wave table. So here it is. So let's compile this. And I'm going to, once it's compiled, let's do the debugger. And I'm going to hit run. All right, let me go turn on the run and go grab my waveform generator. Oh, I mean, uh, scope. So I see a eight point uh, sine wave right here. Uh, clearly, it, it does look like a sine wave, but uh, because there are only eight points, you know, you see this uh, artifact right here. So if I had a much uh, larger value, uh, this would be a lot more smoother. So let me go and actually generate a much larger value. So I have sine wave instead of eight, let me call it around 128 values. Submit. Uh, nope, let me go 128 and say all of them in a single line. Uh, submit. So here's my lookup table that I generated. Uh, let's see, lookup table that I generated. So let me go stop this for a second and I'll go to the code and replace this with 128 points. Oops. So, great. All right, so now 128. So let me just go update my code right here, 127 up there. Uh, so, compile, and my waveform is still running the old values. Let me flash this. All right, and we haven't we flashed, but we haven't started. So my waveform is right here. Let me go this. Put this on the side, my waveform generator up here, or uh, O-scope right here, and I'm going to hit run. Okay, so now, let me just get the time base, find my mouse. Okay, here it is. So here is my sine wave that just came out of that D to A uh, channel, DAC channel on the Cortex M7 on the nucleo board.